Indeed, the choirs put a lot of work into preparing for the cantata for today. Uh, we give thanks for all their work, and uh, we hold them up in our thoughts and prayers as they come to share this. I don't know if you've ever sung in a cantata, but that can be a nervous time. I imagine that there is a little bit of nervousness. Uh, may they feel our gracious love and receptivity as they come to, to share that now. And may we also remember that... Uh, that the cantata is done this year in uh, memory of, of one of the choir members, John Jernigan. has come to us and we behold the marvelous glory of God. Christ left his throne in heaven to take on human form. The word was made flesh and through the body of Christ we beheld the glory of God full of grace and truth. With his hands he touched the people with healing and grace. With his feet he walked the earth to show the way and the light. With his voice, he preached the word of God with astounding truth. But his gr glory was never displayed more clearly than when he led his disciples up a mountain. There, his body was transfigured and his face glowed with holy light. They beheld heaven's glory as a spirit descended on him like a dove. From the clouds, a voice said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen. To him.
She quietly walked into the room without a word. The disciples watched her bow before Jesus and break open a very expensive vial of perfume. With deep gratitude, she anointed his feet and dried them with her hair. Mary had so much to be thankful for. Jesus had restored her soul and had brought her brother, Lazarus, back from the dead. Now she brought her precious perfume and anointed the Lord with worship. The disciples thought she had wasted the expensive oil. But Jesus said that Mary was anointing him to prepare his body for burial. Today, some might say that we waste our time and effort to tell this story. But like Mary, we have so much to be thankful for. How could we keep from singing of Christ's great love as we trace his journey to the cross? With deep gratitude, we follow Mary's example and humbly anoint the Lord with worship.
During his final days, Jesus was preparing his disciples for what was to come. He had taken them to the mountain where his body shone like the sun. When Mary anointed his feet, he told his disciples she was preparing his body for burial. Then, at their last Passover meal, Jesus quietly broke bread and shared it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this and remember me. This is the body of Christ poured out and broken for you, Jesus said. Greater love has no man than to lay down his life for a friend. In the coming days, he would be arrested, tried, and then executed. The body of Christ would be subjected to great suffering. But through the journey of the cross, Jesus willingly laid down his life as he demonstrated his great love for us.
And Pilate asked, What shall I do then with Jesus who's called the Messiah? And they all answered, Crucify him. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in purple robe and went up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. place of the skull, which is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and the disciple whom he loved. When Jesus saw them there, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. Oh, oh, oh. 
Later, knowing that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. Then, he, then they put a sponge soaked in wine to his lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. As Jesus breathed his last, his mother Mary stood at the foot of the cross. She had loved him before he was born. She loved him as she held his tiny body in her arms and sang him lullabies. And still she loved him when they put him on the cross to die. Mary heard his cry when he drew his first breath of life. Now as he took his last, she heard his final words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. His body was still, the sky grew dark, but the cries of his mother rang out through the silence. Thank you. 
As they sealed the tomb, Jesus' friends and family thought all was lost. But we now know that Christ rose from the dead and appeared to many people. He ascended to heaven and later His Spirit anointed believers with holy power. Early in Jesus' ministry, when He went to be baptized, John the Baptist exclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Lamb has been sacrificed so our sins may be taken away. Now the church comes to bring thanksgiving and praise to the Lamb. We join the voices of heaven and earth to say, Worthy is the Lamb that has been slain to receive the power and riches and wisdom and might. Unto Him that sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be the blessing and honor and glory and the dominion forever and ever.
The Word became flesh and lived among us. Though the body of Christ no longer dwells among us, His Spirit lives in all who believe in Him. Now we have become the body of Christ as we continue His work on earth. With Christ as our head, we are His hands and feet. We are called to go into the world to do His will and continue His ministry of hope, peace, and love. Thank you. 